So this week's episode of To the Abandoned Sacred Beast, we get the first true glimpse of Nancy and Hank's relationship and where it will go now that she is following in the kind of lone soldier who's trying to basically kill his comrades and Nancy of course thinks he's a cold blood murderer. But now her eyes are actually being opened to maybe what he's doing is actually a mercy killing rather than just cold out first degree murder. And this episode was once again a slight improvement of last week's episode in my honest opinion. I thought last week's episode was great, it improved on episode 1 which I already thought was a solid episode. But this episode I really enjoyed just something I wasn't even considering and that's the fact that Hank was their captain. He naturally would have taught these soldiers something, whether that be how to survive on the battlefield or just how to live their life, and now that they're slowly losing themselves over their basically demonic powers, those just personality traits could really take hold and turn them into an even more dangerous monster. And that's kind of what we get with the Minotaur's Fortress, where you literally have a coward Theodore, who basically, you know, when gunfire was all around him, he would be cowering and crying, wanting to go home, and his captain Hank would say, you know, I'm scared too, but the difference between me and you is I'm not just sitting there letting my fear eat away, I'm doing something to prepare for the battle. That's a really important lesson for someone on the field, for probably 90% of soldiers not wanting to fight, you know, clean your gun, prepare your water bottle, something just to keep your mind to not only help you on the battlefield but just not let your fear take hold but when you literally have demonic godlike powers that can just eat away at you and really drive you and not think rationally like a human that preparing that preparation can destroy an entire town as you say give me everything you have prepare there's going to be a battle because that fear of a coward is taking hold. I never considered that and when you see Hank say you know I did this I taught him how to do this that's such a painful piece of dialogue. It's a character who seems so emotionless on the outside, which is why I think it's so important that Mappa gave us that episode one, where we really showcase just the war before Hank started killing his fallen soldiers. To literally see someone like Nancy look at him as just a ruthless killer who has no compassion in his entire body, but then you really know from our perspective what he's actually doing, and then seeing those just simple lines that he'll speak, and seeing the actions of the people that he's hunting, it's really tragic just seeing how he goes about his day really feeling just horrible like he is a monster but he knows that this is the deal they made and this is what has to happen because not only is, are they going to hurt innocent civilians they're gonna hurt themselves and they know they want peace and that moment when nancy's basically looking on the mercy kill and kind of starts thinking like what did my father ask did he beg did he want this it immediately starts opening her eyes that maybe this monster that she was looking at isn't actually a monster but just a man who has a very painful mission that he is forced to complete. This episode did a remarkable job at just characterizing, of course, Hank once again really showcasing just the idea of the captain, because of course we knew he was his captain, but for me personally, I never was really thinking about what he taught his soldiers, just that he was a very inspiring leader. He's just someone who was charismatic and obviously got the soldiers kind of ready for battle. I wasn't actually thinking of just how there would be cowards or just different mentalities of how they would fight and how someone like Hank could inspire them and actually make them be able to survive the battlefield and how that could actually bite him in the ass now and just imagining you're going up against someone like Theodore who is a coward who used to run away from the battlefield and if you never taught him how to basically survive he wouldn't be in this situation not only hurting himself but hurting others. It's just like rubbing salt into the many wounds that Hank is forced to have that just won't heal no matter how much time passes. You also get quite a bit of characterization for Nancy in this episode. I'm gonna keep calling her Nancy not Shao because I just prefer her first name Nancy similar to Hank. I love what happened in this episode because she was pretty much just tagging along as like a cheerleader in a way for a good chunk of this episode. You're seeing her following Hank and of course Hank's not pushing her back as like I mentioned last week. He just killed her father. It'd be understandable about why he would allow her to tag along for the time being but there comes a point of course when he locks her out saying like hey you know this is as far as you're going you're gonna have to go back home and that's when one of our new character Liza comes in and says hey and we're gonna push you away but by the end of this episode you really see her as not just this random clueless girl who's like I hate Hank I'm going to kill Hank or I'm gonna maybe see what he's doing and then I'll consider no like within this episode she immediately changes her tone with Hank someone who she was giving these like dagger eyes at really just feeling like she was foaming at the mouth wanting to pull the trigger and end his life but by the end of this episode she recognizes that of course she still has questions she's not gonna flip her switch and say we should just kill the them all because she's naturally going to come to the conclusion that we should kind of view these case by case but she's at least recognizing that holy shit maybe this guy isn't who I first thought and that only took three episodes we just really got introduced to her with the last week's episode and we're already recognizing that holy shit she's not 
going to just be this person who just continues to say, Hank, you're a dumbass, you should not do this. Now, she probably is going to still say, like, we have to judge these case by case, and she probably will want to give everyone the benefit of the doubt. But the fact that she didn't go in before he pulled the trigger, she stood by and waited for that bullet because you can see just the smile. You can see Theodore being so happy that for the first time in probably a long time since joining the battlefield, he wasn't scared. He was ready for death. And I think that's going to be incredibly important for their relationship, and it's something that I quite enjoy. She has a gun, she knows how to fire the gun, but she really isn't a soldier, so it'll be interesting to see just if she ever implements herself into the actual combat side of things, or if she will remain more neutral and just more of the morality side of things. But nonetheless, I enjoy their dynamic quite a bit, and just to have someone like Nancy, who was kind of our introduction to one of our new characters, Liza, in this episode, there is no better way to introduce us to someone whose personality didn't match the character design at first glance, because her character design is very expressive, is how I would put it, and to have our girl Nancy be embarrassed, flustered, and just, oh my god, the blushing, that was cute, adorable, and it really kind of eased us in, in a very humorous way, to someone who had a very sexual character design. I quite enjoyed Liza, though, because I wasn't really sure what type of character she would be. Obviously, she was aiding Hank, and, you know, she was giving him the bullets so he could kill his fallen soldiers. But nonetheless, she was charismatic, but not overly, like, out there and really, you know, just shoving her chest in your face or anything like that, which I thought would be her character based on the character design and what anime typically does with them. But her character was really, I think, nurturing, but strict when it counted. Like, when she was trying to push Nancy away from this castle, she was saying, like, hey, you have to come. I'm better than Hank. I'll make sure you don't activate any traps like he did. She was someone who was strict, but she wasn't so strict you wanted to push back and say you're not my real mom screw you or anything like that she naturally was someone you respected and thought she would be a good friend to have and i enjoyed that she was a very interesting character that hopefully will be a reoccurring character every so often you know to resupply hank something like that because i think her voice actor was very pleasant and i just enjoyed her character being the sort of supporting character but also someone to help guide someone as maybe naive as nancy was in this episode but also give her the push to maybe become someone different than she currently is when it counted because you know this is a girl who really wants to see what hank is doing and she recognizes that as long she's not going to try to fight the beast herself maybe it's okay for her to recognize what hank's actually doing so maybe she doesn't mislabel him like she probably currently is and that's a really important moment for nancy but also this new addition liza in this episode i'm really enjoying what to the abandoned sacred beast is doing overall because if you really take a look at a lot of the elements to this week's episode, last week, the first episode, it really feels like a lot of what you would typically expect with a Monster of the Week style show. But with each episode, there's like one key aspect that completely changes the tone and fundamentals to the formula to this show. With this week's episode, it was the Captain Dynamic, someone who taught this coward soldier how to survive and in result how that actually pretty much nearly destroyed a town, but also destroyed this person who probably, if he was never taught that and he did become one of these beasts, he probably would have just been cowering in a cave, something to that nature, all this time, and then Hank would have had to come in and blow his brains out. But because he taught him how to take his fear and turn it into basically a weapon, or at least a tool that he could use, that ended up destroying an entire town. That is what drove this episode. You can look at just Nancy's embarrassment, her kind of cluelessness, you know, triggering traps, things like that. You can look at the character design of Liza, or hell, just the maybe cold, ruthless persona of someone like Hank. But when you take the core fundamental of this episode, it is something you don't get to see. Monster of the Week shows are typically you focus on the characterization and personality of a side character who is having to have our main characters kill one of their friends or family because they lost themselves by a demonic force or something like that. Because Hank is someone who trained them as their captain, who loved them, who was friends with them, considered them family at the end of the day. To have these moments where each of these characters valued Hank or viewed Hank in a different light, who taught them something in a different way, it gives you this sense and bond you don't get to see with Monster of the Week shows, and especially in anime. To have this level of connection and to really flourish their demonic form, it doesn't just feel like we're looking at, here's the Monster of the Week, we're looking at the Soldier of the Week. Someone who fought alongside Hank, and it gives you this sense of characterization, the flashbacks to show what Hank did for them, or just the small bonding moments they had in the past to really see what is doing to Hank on the inside because if you look at Hank on the outside he looks like a cold emotionless person but you'll have these subtle reactions where you can see the pain and just the torment how he's still having nightmares about Elaine it's showing you just how destroyed he actually is and you'll have these subtle moments like when a soldier is dead instead of tears rolling down their face 
there will be blood going down their eyes. It's a lot of character, even though it appears to be so anime and basic at a surface level. You really think it is just going to be another Monster of the Week, but it's another Person of the Week. And the fact that you can have a Monster of the Week formula, but feel so human, even though we're looking at monsters, it really is a testament to the writing and how solid it actually is. It has so much that I love about anime. Hell, it even has some kind of minuscule aspects that I dislike about anime. But the thing that drives each and every episode is just how human in the way they characterize these characters, it really feels like something special. We do get a glimpse at the end of the episode after the credits of kind of, it seems like there's going to be someone potentially hunting Hank. That's kind of what I got from the after the credit scene where it seems like not only is Hank going to be hunting his soldiers, but maybe there'll be someone else hunting these soldiers as well, including Hank. And I don't think Hank would be okay with someone killing his fallen comrades because the deal that they made was no one would ever fall by the hands of anyone other than their own species not to mention we see some legs dangling which I'm going to assume was Elaine and she's probably being kept on some form of life support with Kane probably doing some shady ass things so we're getting a glimpse of more of an end game past just you know killing his soldiers there's going to be some antagonists that are going to go up against him, which I think is important because as fun as it is for the past couple of episodes, hunting down his soldiers, it's emotionally gripping. It is important to have something that will also go against Hank, not just the people that he's hunting. It's important for the hunter to also be the hunted every so often. So I think that will provide some pretty interesting dynamics overall. Let me know what everyone thought of this week's episode of To the Abandoned Sacred Beast. What did you think of the new character, Liza? And what did you think of just the fight and just motivations in this week's episode? Let me know down in that comment section below. If you did enjoy this video, though, be sure to drop a like and also hit that subscribe button if you haven't been new. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.